Okay, this is the P1 paper from June 2021. It's question number two. If you have a look at it, you can see that there's a lot of work on algebraic expressions here. We're going to have negative and fractional indices later on. We're going to be factorizing. But let's make a start and see what we've got to do. So it says fx, part a, fx is equal to ax cubed plus 6a plus 8 x squared minus a squared x and then it tells me that f minus 1 is equal to 32 so if f minus 1 is equal to 32 f minus 1 is a and then putting minus 1 in so minus 1 cubed 6a plus 8 times minus 1 squared minus a squared times minus 1 that is all equal to 32, so let's just multiply everything out. I'm going to get minus a, I'm going to get plus 1, so I'm going to get plus 6a plus 8, and then I'm going to get uh, the minus and the minus cancelling there to make plus a squared equals minus 32, oh, sorry, equals 32, not minus 32, equals 32. And so let's rearrange all that to look like a, a normal quadratic. Just move that up a bit. We're going to have a squared, the a and the 6a, the minus a and the 6a. We'll sort that out to be that. And we've got plus 8 minus 32. So that's minus 24 equals 0. I'm going to be surprised if that doesn't factorize. And it does. I'm not going to do quadratic factorizing for you. Go away and have a practice. If you can't do something like that, this is going to give me a equals 3 or a equals minus 8. Let's go back and have a better look at the question. It's been too long looking at it. It says, show that the only possible value for a is 3. Well, remember, a is a positive constant. So um, if a is positive, a must just be equal to 3. Okay. Um, perhaps just to make that really clear, perhaps you say, since... A is positive, A equals 3. So it's clear that we're not considering the minus 8 one. Okay, so that's part A done. Let's have a look at part B. Oh, no, sorry, let's have a look at A part 2. We'll get ahead of ourselves. A part 2. It says, using A equals 3, solve the equation fx equals naught. Okay, so I've got um, if a equals 3, then fx is going to be 3x cubed. If a equals 3, we're going to get 18 plus 8, so that's 26x squared. And if a is equal to 3, we're going to get minus 3 squared, which is minus 9x. So they want us to solve that equals null. Ah, right, well this is fairly um, fairly clear what to do for the next stage. We've seen this a lot where we have, it looks like a cubic and how do I solve a cubic? It is, but we can straight away say x can come out of all the terms there. So although it's a cubic, it's actually breaking now down into x multiplied by a quadratic. As I said to you just a moment ago, I'm not going to spend any time factorising quadratics. You need to look at a different video for that. We haven't got time to be going to that level in one of uh, these videos. This factorises down to 3x minus 1 times x plus 9. So we have our possibilities for x being x equals 0, 3x minus 1 equals 0, or x plus 9 equals 0 which gives me what we had, x equals naught. It's going to give me x equals a third, or it's going to give me x equals minus 9. Let's just go back and say, yeah, didn't, didn't have any um, specifications on that one, just solve it. So those are my three answers, x equals naught, x equals a third, and x equals minus 9. Okay, now on to part B. Part B says... Hence, find the real solutions of this thing. Let's write, write that down because then we can do the comparison. 
So B part one says, let's make it a bit smaller just so I can see it, 3y plus 26y to the two thirds minus 9y to the third equals normal. Let's make it the normal size again. So if we compare this equation here now with this equation here, what we can see is doing a direct comparison I'm going to get and I'm just going to look at this one because I think this is the easiest one to look at I'm just going to get that y is equal to x cubed okay it would be the same no matter which thing I did it would be the same here if I did x equals y to the third they're all saying the same thing but if we start off uh, comparing coefficients we're going to get the y equals x cubed or x equals y to the third okay so if x equals y to the third I'm going to use this situation now in here in here and in here if I'm going to try and solve the equation for y I'm just going to say y to the third equals naught. y to the third equals um, a third, and y to the third equals minus 9. Let's just do that then. So I'm going to get that y to the third equals naught, or y to the third equals a third, or y to the third equals minus 9. And if I've got those three things then, all I'll do to solve the equation, cube both sides. If you want to say that to make it clear to the examiner what you're doing, you don't need to, it's more to explain it to you guys. Cube both sides, I'm going to get y equals naught cubed. Well, that's naught. I'm going to get y equals a third cubed. So that's y equals 1 over 27. And I'm going to get y equals minus 9 cubed and minus 9 cubed is whatever that works out to be on the calculator you can do it works out to be 729 if we then go back and have another look for part two now for part two what we've got is that three lots of nine to the three z plus 26, 9 to the 2z, minus 9, 9 to the z equals 0. Well, let's write that down and then we'll do the comparison. So first of all, let's write that down. It's 3 lots of 9 to the 3z, plus 26 lots of 9 to the 2z, minus 9 lots of 9 to the z equals naught and say if we just have the comparison with the original equation that we had for x's we had 3x cubed 26x squared and 9x equals naught you can compare all of them okay you can compare that one or that one but surely you no know, it's common sense to do is to compare that one there this time so we're going to get that x equals 9 to the z. And then we can pretty much follow the same thing we've just done for the last one. If x is going to be equal to 9 to the z, then I'm going to get 9 to the z equals 0. Or 9 to the z equals a third. Or 9 to the z equals minus 9. So when we're looking at these then... For the first one, if 9 to the z equals 0, think about what you know about um, the graph y equals e to the x, okay? Or think about what you know about powers. a to the x looks like this, okay? It never comes below the axis. 
and it has an asymptote at naught. So when we're looking at this one here, this one is going to give me no solutions. There's never an answer for Z when we're going to get that um, 9 to the Z works out to be equal to naught. So this one here now, what we've got to do is to say 9 to the Z is equal to 1 over 3, or 9 to the Z is equal to, how am I going to get 1 over 3 looking like something with a 9? Well, it's 1 over square root 9, which is 1 over 9 to the half. which is 9 to the minus a half. So that means that Z would work out to be equal to minus a half from this one. And again, the 9 to the Z equals minus 9 from the same idea as we said before about that graph. 9 to the Z cannot be negative either. So there are no solutions to those two bits and just that solution for that one. Quite a tricky end to that question, but just go back and have another look at it and hopefully it'll make sense.